Hello there internet, Mawa here and I got another MTG Arena video for you guys today. Today we're featuring a Boros Angel mid-range list, which is a pretty straightforward deck in regards to how it is played, as it is a mid-range deck and with mid-range decks you generally want to play on curve, but it does revolve around Angel Synergy and it's a pretty powerful list at that. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's called Charlie's Angels. Pay no attention to my deck names. Uh, I attempt to be somewhat funny, but I... I <laughs> clearly fail miserably as this is the deck list right here uh it is like i said a mid-range list which has some pretty key things that i i want to cover so as you can see uh we have a curve that heavily favors uh white over red and we have an anti vanguard tocatli honor guard which is a very interesting card in this deck lava coil which is one of the uh, removal tools that was introduced with gills of ravnica which has seen a lot of play competitively uh, Justice Strike, very cool card as well. History of Vanalia. As you can see, a pretty steady, powerful curve. Like, all of our, our turn 2 plays, our turn 3 plays, our turn 4 plays are pretty uh, above average, for, sh for sure. History of Vanalia is one of the strongest 3 uh, mana cards in the game. And uh, a card that sees a lot of play when you, you know, play white. We have Resplendent Angel, which is one of the key cards of this list. Very powerful 3-drop, which has the flying keyword and an ability that says the following. At the beginning of each end step, <laughs> narration. If you gain 5 or more life this turn, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. And it has the ability that if you pay 6 mana, on to the end of the turn, it gains plus 2, plus 2, and lifelink. Uh, not only can this ability be procced by its own active right there with six mana it synergizes with other cards that can provide you with lifelink procs in this deck such as uh lyra dawnbringer very snowbally card that is very well statted uh, on its own like a three three for three that has flying is really solid and uh, the fact that it has potential in the late game as well makes this card really strong as i said we have rekindling phoenix uh, one of the most, if not the most powerful card from the Rival, uh, Rivals of Ixalan expansion. As it has been a staple for many mid-range red focus decks for quite some time now. And one of the reasons why uh, Ross's Contempt does still see quite a bit of play. A very, very powerful 4-drop that will not go away unless you exile it. As, you know, whenever it's destroyed, it creates an elemental creature token that enables you to resurrect the Phoenix from the graveyard and give it haste so unless you're able to kill it and exile it. It's one of the reasons why Lava Coil is also so popular, because Lava Coil exiles the unit it kills, which is why you see this card being played a lot in red decks, uh, primarily because of Rekindling Phoenix. Very, very, like I said, powerful 4-drop. Uh, also, another powerful 4-drop, Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. You know, a very strong unit with uh, the flying tag, an angel as well, and uh, the mentor keyword, which is, um, I'm not sure if this has been implemented in the past in, in older expansions, but I'm not aware of it. Like, this is new to me, at least. Uh, it is an, an, a, a keyword right there that says, whenever this creature attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. So you can give plus one, plus one to a weaker unit uh, in your lineup, which you definitely have options to do because you are playing Tocatli Honor Guard, which has one attack, so it's one less th uh, than Aurelia. And this card is mainly meant to counter uh, the Golgari mid range list running around, as her ability will deny the Explore from being procced. It will also deny the uh, the Wild Growth. Am I, am I saying its name correctly? I'm, I'm very bad with names. I'm sorry, guys. So give me a second. Uh, uh, it, it won't deny... Okay, so I'm, I'm not expressing myself 100% uh, well here. The, the Wild Growth Walker, it won't deny its ability because what uh, the Honor Guard does is it prevents uh, creatures that enter the battlefield to trigger their ability upon entry, right? But it will stop Explore uh, procs that would uh, activate the Walker instead, right? So, for example, if your opponent plays the, uh, the Mer Merfolk uh, Branch Walker, which should be around here... You know, when it enters the battlefield, it explores. This this sort of uh, action is denied. Chupacabra is denied as well. Ravnish Chupacabra, uh, amongst other cards. Like, for example, the deck that I showcased off the other day, the, the Grixis discard deck, both uh, Nicol, Bolas, Ravager, and the Dream Eater 
would not proc their abilities because they they proc upon entry which is what this unit denies and it's a very interesting meta call honestly this card has been around for a bit since it was introduced with, uh, with Ixalan but it wasn't it didn't really see much play um, I'm, 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 I was quite surprised when I saw this but it, the more I thought about it the more it made sense to me so this is a pretty strong list like I said uh, every single one of your curb plays is very powerful and it's also not the most complex to play but it, it, it is very uh, fun and you know, very flexible as well. That's the power of mid-range lists, right? They can uh, slow down aggro decks or try to out-tempo control decks at the same time. So, yeah, without further ado, let me hop onto some games and uh, we shall continue our climb. So, let's go. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's see if we can continue uh, the climb as we're almost in platinum three we're one win away i think from getting there so that would be nice gotta keep the streak going as we're facing screech uh do i know this person i i, I may i may know this person i'm not sure <laughs> uh, I, I feel like i've had a screech in my twitch chat before i, I don't know maybe uh regardless we have a an interesting hand like we have two planes, which makes things really easy for us because we do have History of Benalia and a bunch of cards that require two planes to cast, right? Uh, we're low on lands, so it's risky to keep this hand, but we're just one land draw away from having a really strong curve going on here. So I am going to take the risk. It's debatable whether you keep this hand or not, but as a mid-range deck... Um, since I'm not control, I, I feel like because I already have a, an early play available, I'm, I'm gonna go for it in, in the Adanto Vanguard, right? Like, I can I can drop this turn, too. As it seems we're, we're facing... And there we go! Easy! Easy game, easy life. Because I already have a plays on the board, this will enter untapped. And we can go Adanto Vanguard right off the bat. This unit is, first of all, gonna force me to, you know, click on this button a lot. Because he has an ability that can be proc whenever. And it seems we're facing uh, green, white, but with um, Merch Merfolk Branch Walker. Interesting. It's not generally what you see in the in the token list, so I'm not sure if this is that deck specifically. We are gonna drop uh, the planes. We're gonna go for the attack first. Our opponent does not opt to trade as we get the three damage from the Adento Vanguard, and we're gonna drop the history of Benalia here. Instead of the uh, Resplendent Angel, we can wait on that. Getting a, a History of Benalia early on applies a lot of pressure and uh, gives us really solid value that is less likely to be answered by our opponent as he's going to drop the second Merfolk uh, Branch Walker right there. I kind of, I, I wish I had my Honor Guard here. That would be pretty nice as there is a Johnny. Ooh, that's that's dangerous. That's a problem. We do have Excellence Binding. Oh, or, or not. He doesn't deem it worthy. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we can't curve into Rekindling Phoenix. I cry every time because we're lacking that second uh, source of red mana. So we're going to have to play uh, Resplendent Angel. You know, first world, uh, world problems here. We're going to attack with uh, Adanto Vanguard only. We don't want to trade this knight just yet because we're going to get the boost uh, of the third chapter of the History of Analia next turn. So we're just going to attack with the Vanguard here. He's not going to be willing to trade into this as we're going to get another, you know, three damage push. Adanto Vanguard is so good at applying early pressure in the game because you don't want to trade into it. You, want to, you don't want to lose value to a 2-drop like that. It just it feels good, man. And we're going to drop the Angel here. And we're going to call it a turn. Now, if this was, you know, black-green, I, I couldn't be worried about Chupacabra here. But instead, he's going to drop a Vine Mare. All right. I, I, you know, don't really... This doesn't really affect me too much because this is a, pretty much an anti-black minion. I mean, it's still pretty decently statted, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that spooky. Ooh. Oh, that's good. I want to keep Excellence Binding for something more impactful. Um, I, I can handle this board state. Uh, unfortunately, the 3-2 the can trade with my 4-3, but I'm, I'm still okay because that's going to force some strong trades from him. Uh, we're going to play the, the Aurelia here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. Look at that animation. <laughs> Oh, what am I even saying? Okay, let's see. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Until the end of the turn, that creature gets plus two. 
Gains Trample if it's red and gains Vigilance if it's white. So what should I give? Um, I mean, this trades, this trades, this trades. I'd, I'd rather give it to the uh, Flying Unit to give it Vigilance. And uh, I'm going to attack with everything. Pretty simple, because my Knights also have Vigilance, so that's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to activate this. I'm going to pay for, for uh, life to make it so my Identity Vanguard is indestructible. I'm going to do some crazy damage to him. Holy fuck. <laughs> Jesus. You're dead. You're so dead. Uh, are you dead? Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> you're so dead. I'm going to... I mean, he's going to gain health, right? But we have Excellence Binding here. We don't need to block this, right? Nah, no, we don't need to block this. We don't need to do shit. No blocking needed. He gains he gains six health from, from that, but we have excellence binding. We target this. I I misclicked. Ah oh, fuck it. <laughs> okay. Well we we still <laughs> thank god I did fuck that up. Yay! We did it! Most earned rank up ever. Oh my god, that misclick. I, I nearly... Oh, I, 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 was, I was getting slightly pissed there, not gonna lie. But we did it. Flawless. Absolute flawless gameplay. Let's go on to another one. And uh, let's try to continue to climb. You guys saw how, how powerful my curve was there. It was just simply... This deck simply has a very, very strong curve. Like, it's a very solid mid-range list. It just... It feels powerful. And... No, not as compelling to play as as the the Grixis discard control list that I featured the other day, but still fun. And uh, this hand is also a keeper, quite different than the other one though. Our curve is not as impactful, but we have some good tools here, and I would like to be facing a a Golgari here, especially because I have my honor guards in hand. So we we'll keep this. It's good enough. Could be better, but could be worse. Honor Guard has 3 health too, which enables it to you know, trade very efficiently. If this is a mono red list, which it is, there's some neat things we can stop. I could lob a coil, but I'm going to hold on to it. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger, so deploy effects basically get denied, which means that the, the 2 drop that deals 2 damage to face doesn't proc. The Chain Whirler doesn't proc either. And. Interesting. Is he gonna is he gonna use two 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 shocks for my two drop? Thank you. Thank you. That's that's so that's swell. That's fantastic. That's great. Um now the question is do I play history of Benalia or do I just knock this stupid thing out? I knock this stupid thing out. Slow down the damage. I can Benalia next turn. Slow him down. That, that's not nearly as threatening. I would rather play Benalia as if he does have an answer for it. He's already played two shocks, so the, the odds of him having a lightning strike instead of a shock are higher. So if I play a 3-3, it, it's, it's just as easy to die. But the difference is this history of Benalia will provide me with a two drop automatically next turn. So tempo-wise, it's more impactful, which is very important. And uh, we're going to play... The angel now. Building up our defenses. Oh, fuck. Damn it. Alright, we are gonna trade off with this. We, we, we miss out from, from the buff, but we gotta... Pri In this matchup, our priority is to avoid damage. Slow him down as much as we can, so we, we, we take it like a... We take it like a man there, and uh, we cannot draw our fourth land. That is a problem. That makes things really complicated. We're going to have to drop another one of these. Or maybe maybe the honor guard is better. The honor guard stops certain things, right? It can still trade off with this is the thing. So I'm, I'm going to play the honor guard. Just to deny certain, um, certain deployment effects here. 
or just, you know, keep eating up these lightning strikes. I mean, at least these lightning strikes aren't going face. There we go. Took you a while. Um, do I pay two life? Oh, no. I can't afford that. <laughs> I legitimately cannot afford that. So we're going to play another one of you here. Again, to try to prevent more pyromancers from going down and dealing two damage to me. It's more important than the three attack. Like there! Like there! Did I? Did I, bitch? Alright, that that was a good play. That was a good call by me. Go go you, Miguel. Uh, we play Phoenix now or we play you? We play Phoenix. Though lava coil could be a thing. We're gonna hold on. Because we, we need board presence to slow him down here. I guess he really wants to deal with my honor guard. Honor guard is putting in the work here, though. Holy shit. Not bad for... Oh! Oh! GG, bitch! <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, always feels good taking that mono red. Oh, man. Nice. Alright. How about we go for one last one? Interesting. That's uh... Oh, she's an angel. Okay. Whenever an R equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to Zordon's end at the, end, the beginning of the next end step. Let's go for the last game. And the continue our clap. Because we want to be the very best. We, we faced this guy earlier today, actually. Didn't we? What was he playing? Was he playing the Drake deck? Ooh. I mean, we still keep this. It's a bit of an odd hand, but we still keep it. I think this this may be uh, this may be the Drake deck or Mono Red, one of the two. Mono Red, right? Ah, uh, ay yeah, 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 ah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 please. Um, we have to kill this. Uh, it's better to just just to strike here, right? L Lava Coil is more flexible. It deals with more stuff. Let's just kill that. All right, let's let's take down another mono red, or or die trying. All right, we can lava coil that. Easy game, easy life. We, we make use of the fact that we're playing a two drop now to get in our land that enters tapped. We lava coil this motherfucker, and we're going into turn four without having taken barely any damage. That that's just that makes me very happy. I would love to draw a land here to ensure that I can curve out into Lyra because Lyra is pretty much the win condition here. But we're gonna go Phoenix first. But obviously, we can't play Lyra. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna, we have the Phoenix at least. The Phoenix will enable us to to really slow him down, unless he has Lava Coil. He has that. He could have. He could combine that with like a Shock, but he would be wasting two resources. On, on my Phoenix, which means that we're slowing him down, and that's five damage that we prevented going to us. That's one fourth of our health. That's a big deal. And you know what? Here we go. Have another one. Have another one, bro. No, no land. It's okay. I got birds. I got birds for days. Actually, that's my last bird. Don't kill it, please. It's a bird. Same combo? Same combo? Are you serious? Oh. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with this. I, I'm literally gaining card advantage out of every single one of these exchanges, and I'm still above 10 health. And all I need... <sighs> Sometimes this game just loves me, man. Holy shit. Alright, have fun dealing with this. Forfeit incoming in 3, 2, 1... Motherfucker. What an asshole. Alright. Alright. 
Well, he, he's top decking now, right? Oh my, oh my god, are you serious? No, no, we can excellent binding that. Oh my god, this guy's a, this guy's a god. This guy's a top deck god. Get that out of here. N that nonsense. Get that nonsense out of my sight. Oh my lord. Yeah, because we're both red and and white. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Wrecked. Omega. Wrecked. <laughs> oh, I can't believe he top decked that enchantment though. Oh my god. Well, as you guys can see, if there's something to learn uh, in this video, is that you know, if you really hate mono red, then maybe mid range Boros Angels is the deck for you. And uh, that's where I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a swell day. Stay tuned for more MTG Arena daily content. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.